the Palais Garnier, is a neo-baroque palace in the centre of Paris. The interior is an astonishing spectacle of gilded carvings, winding grand staircases, massive crystal chandeliers and haunting light. The theatre itself is rich with red velvet seats, varnished woods, opulent curtains and gold. Descend beneath the refined theatre and you will find yourself winding down cryptic dark tunnels and soggy channels that flow to the River Seine. One can see why the setting and the atmosphere are spectacles of inspiration for Tim Cantor's mind. Inside, as the lights go dim and the performance is just about to begin, there is no place in the world he would rather be. The exterior ornamentation of the palace is full with dramatic marble friezes and lavish statuary, both blatant and hidden, that layer the entire edifice. Flanking the right side of the palace entrance is a large stone carving titled La Danse by the 19th century sculptor Jean-Baptiste Carpeau. Tim found himself deeply drawn to this sculpture and for the first time he chose to use the figures within this carving as models for an oil painting. For Tim, this was a unique way of thought. Tim treated the statue as an archetype for an altogether different concept. The Carpo sculpture consists of seven figures intertwined. While studying the 20-foot-high statue, Tim directed his interest on just one figure, a nude female that Tim felt had a docile expression of both joy and darkness, perfect for a preconceived arrangement that vaguely floated in his mind. The features were obscure, rough in the stone, and this was both inspiring and challenging to Tim. He would have to imagine all of the subtle elements that are indistinct in a statue made of stone. What developed was a painting of the same title, La Danse, which features a playful girl with her head draped in a golden cloth. She is beyond the concealment of a red curtain, reminiscent to those that border the grand stages of the Palais Garnier. A wretched hand reaches for her, grasping, but she is fearless. It is a powerful, joyful, slightly wicked painting, conjured up by the feelings that Tim senses when he is at the Opera Garnier. This unique approach to painting sparked the desire to create another work, stirred by a much more well-known sculpture, La Petite Danseuse de 14 Ans, The Little Dancer of 14 Years by Edgar Degas. In 1881, Edgar Degas originally formed the figure in wax. It was not until years after his death that the original wax was cast in bronze. There are multiple castings of this sculpture extant in the world. Tim Cantor travelled to see one in the New York Metropolitan Museum of Art and another at the Musée d'Orsay in Paris, long before his intentions arose to recreate the statue into a painting. However, Tim sketched the sculpture on different visits, transfixed while imagining her delicate facial features such as eye colour, skin colour, hair colour. Not unlike La Danse, the surface is coarse and details are obscure, but Tim sensed his own point of view of what this sculpture was conveying to him. On one of his drawings he wrote the words, She is sculpted entirely as innocence appears. Her eyes are forever between confidence and tears. This was how Tim interpreted the piece and it became his ambition to relay that sensation through his painted translation. Within this painting, Tim paid homage to the artist by hiding the letters of Degas's name deeply throughout the image. One other sculpture Tim Cantor has brought to life in his own interpretative painting is a much more menacing Baroque marble statue created by the 17th century Italian artist Gian Lorenzo Bermini.
Tim explained that he was sitting down on the floor at the Galleria Borghese, gazing up at the sculpture, which was very refined in comparison to the previous two sculptures he had painted. But what struck him was the powerful, contradicting impact that it had on its viewers. As Tim sat there sketching, he was fascinated by the whispers of almost everyone who viewed the grand piece. Beautiful was the word that he was hearing over and over. Yet, this is Bermini's Rape of Proserpina, a story telling of Pluto taking Proserpina by force to the underworld, depicting rape in its archaic definition of kidnapping. It is a dark, tragic fable, but to the modern viewer, it is simply beautiful. Tim absolutely loved the twisted gist that was radiating from the work, and it was that overall sense of contradiction which ultimately motivated Tim to paint his own rendition in oil of the same title, Rape of Proserpina. How Tim delivered the scene in oil is vastly intriguing. He painted Pluto with more murkiness in his skin and dark russet tones. Proserpina is painted fair as her skin shadows fall into violet hues. Unlike the angelic sense of Bermini's white marbled sculpture, Tim's painting exudes a worrisome tenor. At the base of Bermini's statue is a three-headed dog. Tim incorporated a more vicious beast with added movement to give the sense of struggle, intrinsically losing any impression that this piece was representing two lovers in a pose and letting the viewer know that this, in fact, is a dark depiction of a dreadful tale. Tim Cantor's inspiration comes unexpectedly, and he is unable to ascertain if there will be more works in his future inspired by existing sculpture. To date, these are the only three paintings that Tim has modelled after sculptures. One, where the inspiration is obscure and instilled into his own imagined scene, and two more directly apparent as a wonderful homage to his favourite sculptures and the historical artists who created them. They are fascinating psychological displays of art, history and judgement that show the unpredictable ways that the past carries on, meshing into a living painter's works. 